you are wondering, well, what am I going to do with my life now for the next um, 20 years? And now that we have this pandemic, it doesn't seem like COVID's leaving us and I feel stuck. I don't want to go back the way I was before. I want to give up my old job and I want to do something fresh and new. I want my life to count. Well, if that is you, then I'm telling you, wisdom is the way to go. Welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Catherine. It is so good to be here with you this morning. So God is setting us up for good things and I am so happy about that because he has plans for you and me and when we get in alignment with his plans and purpose then life turns on um, almost into a rhythm and a flow hallelujah and things just start to happen and our our insight and revelation just heightens and we move from faith to faith we move into a new era or area of of blessing and wisdom and yes we are in a new era this is the era of wisdom so to really uh capitalize on this era and the movement of the way things are going we need to first do what lady wisdom says right in the beginning at the top in the chapter it says the beginning of wisdom is the fear and the knowledge of god it's the reverence of god and when we do that when we reverence god give him first place in our lives then everything else falls into place because we now have the Holy Spirit which Jesus Christ blew on his disciples and he said receive the Holy Spirit and that was not just for those disciples then but for all of us because then we have the day of Pentecost when the day of Pentecost had fully come that the disciples and followers of Jesus 120 of them were up in the upper room and they received the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that authority and power and might to do exploits for God. And that is what God wants from, from us. He wants to work within us on the planet to do exploits for him, to come and be everything that God has intended for us. So that's the good news. This is an exciting time to live because uh, as things get more difficult, we now as the church and the children of God will have solutions to problems. God will give us the answers through wisdom so that we can become more skilled, more expert, more knowledgeable, and we're not just working with earthly knowledge and earthly wisdom, but we now have the super on our natural, you know, the supernatural, right? And that is what we have, the supernatural power of God through wisdom to do exploits for him. So that's the good news. If you are wondering, well, what am I going to do with my life now for the next um, 20 years and now that we have this pandemic it doesn't seem like COVID's leaving us and I feel stuck I don't want to go back the way I was before I want to give up my old job and I want to do something fresh and new I want my life to count well if that is you then I'm telling you wisdom is the way to go yes get into God and let God 
unfold for you from the inside out your purpose he will reveal to you why you are here why you love to do certain things why you love to eat certain foods why you love to go certain places why you attracted to certain people all of that make up that all of that uh, about you the characteristics your life your um your experiences all these things come together to make up you and now is the time to express you yes express you so the good news is that we are headed into a new year 2022 and god wants to release you into the marketplace release you into your purpose and your destiny but we have a responsibility and that responsibility is to know the word of god to know how god thinks if we're going to flow with God, we got to know God. Now that's quotable. <laughs> if you're going to flow with God, you got to know God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could tweak that from Dr. Catherine Constant. If you're going to flow with God, you got to know God. And God is uh, wanting you to know him. That's why he provided the word of God for you and me so that we can dive into it and the book of the bible that really attracts me and really speaks to our culture our socialization how god wants us to live a godly lifestyle the wisdom lifestyle can be found in the book of proverbs and i was doing some of my own little research on proverbs uh, a little deeper research because i've enjoyed reading the book of proverbs over and over again and i have done some study of it but there's so much knowledge on um everything on google <laughs> so i went to google and i got this summary of uh, proverbs and everyone is sharing knowledge knowledge is not the issue uh today no there's so much knowledge available and the understanding is there but we're in the era of applied knowledge that's where wisdom comes in because wisdom gives you the knowledge and he says with all your she says with all your knowledge get understanding and then with understanding she says use common sense and good judgment let them walk with you and so to me that is discerning of the times that's what we we get with wisdom we're able to get the knowledge, the understanding, but then wisdom then gives us the discernment of the times. What are, what are the trends happening now? And how can we become trendsetters as people of God, as the church, as the ecclesia, as the bride of Christ? How can we be the trendsetters? And that's where God needs you his believers his wisdom connection family he needs you to be now the trendsetters for this new era of wisdom hallelujah that's a good one mm -hmm. you are the trendsetter <laughs> for this new era of wisdom this time that we're coming into hallelujah so it it behooves us to understand proverbs clearly to really review it on a regular basis, to find out what does Proverbs have to say about the topics and the interests that you have. So for example, I have the interest in gardening. I love gardening. I have a gardening channel here on YouTube called Catherine's Garden and Home. So what would be a good thing for me to do is to go through Proverbs and find all of the verses that speak about gardening, planting, seeds, harvesting, water, everything that has to do with nature and the garden. And then take those proverbs and see how I can apply those proverbs to my everyday living. And to me, that is so exciting. That is what we want to do. We want to really get into proverbs and let the book of proverbs speak to us individually remember theme 
Proverbs Challenge here at Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time from November 1st to December 1st. <music>。We'll be going through Proverbs and looking at how God thinks about things and how God will reveal to us what is the most important thing that He wants to tell us. You know, it gives God and the Holy Spirit access to our thought pattern and、um, helping us to to open up to His way of thinking. And I, I am excited about this. I'm ex highly excited about this challenge because it can lead to many other things. Because now, whatever you're doing becomes Bible based. It becomes,、um, you know, Proverbs based versus you just doing things on your own. And we start to think word word versus. Um, you know what the television is telling us, what the worldly trends are telling us, and so forth. We're telling ourselves what what is trending in heaven. Hallelujah! <laughs> We will be trending with God and Holy Spirit and wisdom. Hallelujah for 2022. And I'm a whole. I am looking forward to. Um, God then blessing us because we're following His word. Because it says His word cannot return unto Him void, but that it must accomplish the thing whereto He sent it to do. So if we are looking to the word of God for insight, revelation, and knowledge, then God will have to fulfill His word in our lives. Because now we're not looking for our own understanding, he said. But in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. So this is a way for us to allow God to direct our path. Now the Bible is sixty-six books, right? And so many words and so many verses, and we can become overwhelmed, especially if you are a new believer in Christ and you really aren't familiar with the Bible. Then this is one way for you to focus in on one book, and Proverbs is such an amazing book. It's the manual for living, and so it will help you now because now is the day of salvation. Now is the time for salvation. We need God now to help us to guide us into where we need to go. So this will help to charge our thinking, and. You know the good thing is is that we have Google on Sesame Street. They call、uh, the they call the smartphone. They call it Smarty.、Uh, if you don't know something, look it up and ask Smarty. You know Elmo then calls Smarty and Smarty comes. Smarty is could you believe it? They're training the kids to look things up on the、um, on the cell phone. And calling the cell phone smarty. Well, they got a point because there's a lot of knowledge on the cell phone, and a lot of knowledge already provided for us through Google, Wikipedia. You know, there's so many Bible tools.、Um, there's so many blogs. People are writing. People are talking. People are thinking. Their their blogs. Their their、um, Their podcasts, their YouTube videos, their Vimo videos. There's so much. Their TikTok. There's all kinds of things. Information. We are in information. This information age, coupled with understanding. But now we need to move into wisdom. Hallelujah. So how do we apply this information to our lives? So that's the good news. That's the good news. The good news of the gospel that we don't have to be fumbling around to find out what God wants for for us, and He can speak to us directly through His Word. His Word is powerful. It's a living word that speaks to now on a daily basis. We need fresh revelation from God. We need a fresh downpour, and that's where. The Bible challenge, the theme Bible challenge comes in. 
Proverbs challenge, challenge specifically comes in because now it forces us to think of now. Where are we now and where do we want to head into the future? Welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home. It's so good to be with you here today. I hope that all is well with you. Well, today is October 31st, 2021. It's the last day in October and it happens to be a Sunday. So I'm going to take you around the garden and let you see what is happening. A lot has happened. Things are just needing a lot of help. And so we are going to just look and survey and assess the garden. And for the month of November, we will be doing garden cleanup. We are going to be planting bulbs and setting ourselves up for the first frost and all those things that are going to happen in the garden. So um, let us go and assess and uh, discover what's happening in Catherine's garden and home. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home. What a beautiful October Sunday morning. It was raining a whole lot this early morning, and now it's around 10 o'clock, and it stopped raining. Everything is wet, but my tree here, this is what I want you to see, my favorite maple tree is just glistening with color here in the Sunday morning light. You can see the trunks of this tree. It's multi-trunked. I think there are three different um, tree trunks that are coming up from the base of the tree. And it is um, so beautiful. What I love about this tree is that it offers uh, privacy in my garden during the summer months and into the fall. But soon I'm going to 
not have that option because the leaves will be falling off but at least I am getting this moment of beauty from it already you can see that there are a lot of uh, leaves down on the ground so one of the things that we are going to have to do is uh, rake up the leaves and we will be composting a lot of these leaves here and giving back to the earth what it has given us in terms of a healthy garden. Because of the rain and the continual uh, amount of rain that we've been receiving, everything is still very green and lush. It has been cold and damp. So right now this temperature is such a pleasure because it's, it's beautiful out right now. But you can see the drastic change in a week's time from last Sunday to this Sunday. Um, how the tender plants and weeds, <laughs> which are plants, have been affected by the cold. Which makes it easy for cleanup. And it tells me that it's time to um, plant in whatever it is that I want planted in to remove these uh, caladiums here and decide what I want to do with them and um, also to gather some more of these zinnia seeds if I can as you can see over there we've already uh, started to um, tidy that bed but yet uh, we still have this bed to do and it will all come together it always does I am glad that I planted these mums here and hopefully they may come back. I think I am going to really continue to mound them up. My husband has been doing that actually and uh, let them be permanent here um, for next year. And the same thing with the mums in this bed here. They really have had a good amount of time to develop strong roots. So hopefully that will make a difference. And I'm really pleased with how my rhododendrons are looking here. Now you could see how much rain we've gotten. I just happened to put this pail here and you can see that it's filled with water. We have been receiving a lot, a lot of rain. This is also a good time to, um, to transplant some of the perennials, like this one here, the dead nettle, and just put pieces of it in different parts of the garden where I want to see this come up for the spring. It has very pretty little pink flowers with it. And it's a perennial so that it will come back year after year, which is a good thing. Yep, it's time to clean up and get those tulips 
in the ground and daffodils. Well, I have no excuse for why I cannot dig up my dahlias because they've toppled over and it's time to straighten and tidy up this bed. We can also see that the um, hostas are starting to fade and they're saying it's time, it's time, it's time, time to clean up. We used to sing this song with the kids, clean up, clean up, everybody clean up. Well, that's what the garden is telling us. It's time to clean up and get things going here. Um, I'm really excited for the fact that these begonias did very well. That was a good investment. They lasted the season. And that's something that I'm going to continue to do each year is to add these begonias here because they seem to like it in this space. Well, I have to say that um, I have been very pleased with my garden this year. And um, just checking out these fruit trees, um, the fruit trees seem to have recovered the plum tree. So hopefully next year I will have plums. This apple tree is doing really well. It really liked being expaliated, I think. And maybe I will get apples this year. Uh, next season coming up. And then this is my um, the other plum tree. Um, this year I must make sure that I follow through and um, give them the spray, the dormant spray that they deserve. And my fig tree. Oh, this was the glory of the garden and has continued to give me fruit, figs. I've made fig jam and all other kinds of uh, pies and things and just there's still a few more figs left on it and I'm excited about this fig tree. Well, this has been an exciting year too with this side of the garden. And as you can see, the wind and the rain has knocked everything over here and my herbal tea garden. But I have been so pleased with it. And there's still a lot of things to harvest, like my um, lemon verbena. There's still things to harvest like the lemon verbena here and there's some sage there, uh, some pineapple sage. And I love these zinnias here. Hopefully I'll be able to harvest these zinnia seeds. And then of course the marigolds. Absolutely beautiful. Just from that one seed packet, there are so many different types. Look at this one. Very pretty. I love the smell of marigolds. Do you love the smell of marigolds? I do. Now these were that golden yellow um, plant here and I think what I'm going to do is to scatter some of these seeds throughout the garden. 
when I cut it down. Well, I'm so pleased with my jewel garden here and my husband went through and mulched it up and he's really kind of prepped it for me which is great because I'm going to be able to put in the tulips and daffodils here in the garden but things have done very well and I'm, I'm very pleased with it my rose bushes that I put in the uh, um, hydrangea, Summer Crush, um, my Virgilia, these boxwoods that I put in, also my rose here and then the Rose of Sharon plant here, um, my hibiscus did well. This part, which I call my urban cottage garden, feel here. The tomatoes are definitely over, but they were delicious. And uh, we could see that the purple perilla is finished. And then I have here, this was my okra plants. And look at what has happened to my zinnias. That means that I'm gonna have to pull them up. Oh, but they were so beautiful. It's over. <laughs> Welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home. It's so good to be with you here today. I hope that all is well with you. Well, to take you around the garden, let you see what is happening. A lot has happened. Things are just needing a lot of help. And so we are going to just look and survey and assess the garden. And for the month of November, we will be doing garden cleanup. We are going to be planting bulbs and setting ourselves up for the first frost and all those things that are going to happen in the garden. So um, let us go and assess and uh, discover what's happening in Catherine's garden and home. 
Hello, 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 and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home. Well, we are at this time where it's just about done here in the garden. And this area was uh, considered my urban cottage garden where I just allowed different plantings to come together. And now it is time to gather as much seed as possible. Uh, my zinnias were just fantastic. I really enjoyed these zinnias and the different colors. So now I'm going to go through and see how many I can possibly save. And for example, this one here, um, it is starting to dry up. You can see that here and it's a beautiful one so what I'm going to do is just pull it harvest it and I'm going to put it in my basket that I have here so that's what I'm going to do uh, just go through and harvest as many of the zinnias that I can and then um, from there also, I'm going to cut some of them and bring them in. I'm, I'm really looking for this color. And I, I love this, this color, this one. As well as these. Now, I don't think they're ready yet. Well, they're not. So I'm going to take them in. But um, I really enjoyed those zinnias. I think this one is one here. This is done. So I'm going to pull this off and add it to my container here. And let it dry out. And then save the seeds. Now this one also has... I can tell that this flower is this one here. That's pretty... So what I'm going to do is just, oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to just pull, pull it off. Um, pull these off and save these seeds. Oh, that one doesn't want to respond. But that's going to be pretty. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now goal is to gather as much seed as possible for next year. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's so beautiful. I think this is pretty too. I like this one.
not much left I'm going to just continue to gather these so here we are um, this is really the end of it and there's just a few more I'm not going to go for the the orange ones I'm, for some reason I just want to stick with the pinks and um, So this is what I've gathered here and I'm going to just take these beautiful flowers, put them in water and save these seeds for next year. I'm so glad that I'm able to gather them up uh, because the temperatures are dropping and soon it will be no more, no more, no more, no more, but that's the end result. This is for November, the beginning of November. So my goal is to then come through and clean out this bed here and then um, plant in my uh, daffodils. I think I'm going to put in some daffodils up here. I usually have tulips um, and I have alliums. So I'm not going to add any of them. So let me go with my beautiful treat here and all of these wonderful seeds that I'm going to harvest in and save for the next season. Well I have here my vase and I'm going to just strip off the leaves here and put them in the vase and when I'm finished I'll show you my bouquet but they came out pretty good. Some of them are already spent, but I think they're still so beautiful. So this is the final bouquet. This deck is a mess, full of leaves, and it's wet out here, but this bouquet is giving me a lot of joy for the end of the season. Look at each and every one of them absolutely pretty I truly have fallen in love with zinnias and definitely will have them in my garden every single year So in my beautiful container here, these are the seeds that I have gathered so far and just wanting them to uh, sit in here and dry up and dry out. And you can see the seeds um, in them. Here, if I pull this out, you see that? That is a seed. Those are seeds. And even though they're a little green, it's okay. Uh, there might be still some life into, in them. And then here, these are the seeds that I gathered uh, today. And if we look at them closely, we can see that they are definitely matured. They're fully uh, matured. So uh, I'm going to be able to have uh, seeds for next year. I, If they still offer seeds at the Dollar Tree, I will buy that seed box pack. But um, look at this here. A lot of them are the pink ones that I collected. I have a few of these colors here. This kind of orangey, uh, tangerine kind of color, which is very pretty. But 
the majority of them are in the pink and purple family so I, I'm really I'm really happy with that and I'm gonna allow them to dry out and then I'll put them in the envelope look at this one <laughs> So that's part of the harvesting of the beauty of Catherine's garden. Well, if you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe. And comment down below, how are things going for you in your garden? I hope things are going well. And I hope that you are still excited about your garden, knowing that, yes, it is about to go to sleep, but still there's so much beauty and goodness in the garden and also we get to dream and think about what's next so leave a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking about your garden in this season of fall but it's also a season heading into thanksgiving and gratitude and joy so leave a comment down below it is just the second of November and already a lot of the leaves are off the tree that I love so much, my golden maple tree. Well, thank you so much for joining me here and see you next time right here at Catherine's Garden and Home where we Grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. That's right. Grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. Bye. For more videos, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time right here in Catherine's Garden. Bye. Hello, 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 and welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Catherine, and I am the author of the book, Lady Wisdom Builds a House. And for the month of November, we are going to have a Proverbs challenge. And I'm calling it the Theme Proverbs Challenge. So what that means is that if you have a, a purpose or a theme or something that you're interested in and you want to learn more about it and you want to know what the book of Proverbs has to say about it, then I want you to come with me as we go through the book of Proverbs chapter by chapter and pull out those verses that speak to the theme that you are interested in. So for example, I'm interested in gardening. I love to garden and I love nature. So each day I'm going to read the chapter for November 1st, I'm going to read the chapter, chapter 1 of Proverbs, and look for verses that speak to gardening, nature, and that sort of thing. May we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. So we want our soul to prosper, which is made up of our mind, our will, and our emotion. 
So for our mind, how can we prosper our mind? By reading through Proverbs and selecting those Proverbs that speak to what our purpose is and what our interests are. What is that theme? And then our will, our will to do it. We can then find a skill or a strategy that will teach us a workshop. It could be a workshop. It could be a master class that will give us the skills necessary to push our theme, our interests for forward and then our emotions. Our emotions will be filled with joy and enthusiasm. Our life will have more hope um, and faith in God will rise because now we have to walk by faith. We are not just depending on ourselves, but we're also depending on the Holy Spirit to guide us each step of the way. So we walk by faith and not by sight. From faith to faith, as Romans 1.17 says, and our life for 2022 will be much more richer, exciting, thrilling. Uh, we will be moving forward. Hallelujah. And uh, I am just excited about this challenge. So come and join me here every morning for the month of November and the 1st of December at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Theme Proverbs Challenge. And I know that you are going to be blessed by it. I know that you're gonna learn so much more about yourself and you're going to be able to hear what God is saying to you even more clearly. As you start to meditate on the Word of God, He's going to illuminate it and cl bring clarity and clarification through the book of wisdom which is the manual for living hallelujah i'm excited i'm excited for you and i'm exciting for me god bless you today hallelujah may you have a wonderful day and get excited about life. Good things are before us. Uh, things may look bad in the world, but for you, because you are a king's kid, you are a Christ being, you have been transformed, translated, hallelujah, and that you, you are the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, great things ahead for you. And may God fulfill his purpose in you. May you get clear direction and understanding of what to do next. And may the blessings of the Lord just fill you today as you walk in the joy and of the possibilities of what may happen and what will happen and what God will reveal to you. Hallelujah for the month of November. <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So let me bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he continue to fill you with this peace. Lady Wisdom says that you are wonderful. You are beautiful. You're God's gift to the world. So go on out there and shine. Let the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And see you tomorrow right here. See you next time right here at Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. If you desire a born-again experience and relationship with God, then just pray with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and right now I ask Jesus to come and sit on the throne of my heart and to be Lord of my life. Amen.